Uh, the first one is uh, you are talking how there is no flow in the river in the late time. See, there are two different types of dams like irrigation and hydrology project dam, Kalada, which is a multi purpose. In the daytime, the water is diverted for irrigation and there is very less power generation. So, there is no flow into the river after power generation and the other water gets diverted through the irrigation canals. And the evenings, for the, uh, to cater to the peak, need, peak load time, you start generating power and then the river flow increases. This is how the fluctuation comes in. And for those rivers which have no irrigation but only hydro, the again here, for example, in Chalakudi, we have daytime in summer, it is 8 to 12 megawatt. And in the night, it increases to 48 megawatt. So that much water will be released into the river concurrent to the power generation. So this creates a 1 is to 4 fluctuation. So this is based on the daily discharge data that we get from these from the uh, 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 authorities. So that's how. This will be only for a certain segment of the river. Yeah, but it is enough. It is enough because let me tell you, 100 years back, in our rivers, in the Western Ghats rivers, every stream used to contribute to the flows base flows in the summer. But nowadays, all the streams dry up immediately after summer because of catchment degradation. So there is no contribution below the dams. I hope I am clear. So below the dams, there is no contribution uh, from those streams which are uh, in the catchment below the dam. So that is also contributing. We are not talking about, but we still think of status quo solutions. We are not looking at the overall picture. That is one thing. Secondly, so let me answer the question. Uh, one point I wanted to make. No, yeah. Just let, let her finish answering. Yeah, sorry. And the next question is regarding Atharapalli. See, the difference between Silent Valley and Atharapalli is, as you said rightly, <coughs> Silent Valley was an environmentalist movement. In those days, the concerns in downstream were not that much problematic because it was in the late 70s, 80s. Now it is 90, 2000, almost 30 years. And in 30 years, the, the amount of destruction that has been taking the downstream areas can be is little bit more than the, the because Silent Valley became the pivotal point for uh, most stronger forest conservation. Yeah, that is the difference. But the downstream has been suffering a lot because sand mining, too much extraction of water, so much infrastructure development, so much pollution from the cities. The cities have grown. Even every village on the in the starts uh, dumping waste into it. So what we have been doing is in Atharapalli, we were, we took the picture to a larger level of the entire river basin. So that is the role where the environmental movements, environmental or the persons who are concerned about environment have been doing in the moment. They played the catalyst role in bringing the upstream and the downstream issues together. In Silent Valley, that was not that much important. But very important in Silent Valley was that if the Kunti River was dammed, that would have been the death of, uh, the final death of Bharatapura because now if Bharatapura is flowing, it's only because Kunti is there. All the other rivers are dammed. So that is the difference. But because now, uh, let me tell you that any, now in any issue in Kerala regarding rivers, we will have to address it at the river basin level. You cannot address it at the issue level. Because things have become very complex. So that is what I have been always trying to tell, in, uh, I mean, tell through my presentations. Short rivers, the problems are so aggravated, the problems are manifested so fast. That is the difference between the larger rivers and the smaller rivers. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. They are aware of that yeah. issues and they, they are not supporting the dam if the dam was, uh, was there. But about the other pillars, see that I would not attribute only to Atharapalli. My own reason, my own That I would not only attribute to Atharapalli. It is the common psyche that has changed because of the flush of development and uh, the rush for development where in 1980s and it was immediately after the Idiki Hydrology Project. And actually, Kerala had no shortage of power in that time. It was actually, let me tell you, in, during Idiki, after Idiki, Kerala was selling power for some amount of time. But after that, the boom came in. But now, because this, like this, that the development debate, environmental development debate, in which because of the, the I mean, the rush of market, gradually environment is becoming a minority voice. But still, in spite of that, Silent Valley had a big backing because it was one of the first movements uh, fought only for ecology. But after that, now Adharapalli, the, the, the difference between Adharapalli and Silent Valley is that Adharapalli, of course, is a people's movement rather than an environmental movement. And people's movement means that is why the river basin communities are more conscious about it. And of course, the environmental movements across the state and the country are conscious about it. But it is not becoming a mainstream movement because of the, as you, as you told, the, 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 
the debate, uh, the I mean, the choice between development versus environment. Now people are becoming, I mean, that environment, the voice for environment is get, becoming a minority. That I agree with you. But in spite of that, uh, this play has been stalled. So that is the achievement I'm trying to uh, try. In spite of this rush for uh, development, overpowering every aspect of the environmental, as all the environmental aspects, Adhrapalli has been stopped, stopped. Not stalled, I'm stopped, but uh, because the clearance is already given and the clearance is still remaining in the Ministry of Environment for us. But people have been able to stop it. Through the court. Through the court. And, and uh, yes, that is another important aspect because in Sayan Valley, court was not used to that extent. But in Adhrapalli, because then we had we had more stronger laws now. We had the we have the A notification which was not there during those times. We have the EPA which was also again just which came after that. So all these have been factored has to be factored into this. So Atripal is also a combination of people's movement and the court. Because not and uh, environment again uh, there is a minority. I agree with you, but that is not according to me only because of Atripal. It is a common psyche. And thirdly regarding the uh, Mullapiriyar. Uh, I am from Kerala, but I don't advocate new dam. I mean, I don't believe that a new dam is the solution to the present problem or the, the big uh, dispute that is going on. And uh, not only seismic or not, let me, according to me, no dam is safe. Okay, whether it is seismic zone or no seismic zone, no dam is safe, anything can happen to any dam. I mean, there are so many factors into it. It's seismicity is one aspect into it. And dams get old. So, but do we have any accountability, uh, we don't have any accountability mechanism by which when a dam crosses a certain age, what are you going to do about it? Of course, in the US, 1,000 dams have been already decommissioned and for different reasons. And one of them is dam safety, one of them. There are so many reasons for which they are decommissioning dams. But we here, we are the third largest dam builder in the world. We still have not started talking about decommissioning dams. So, according to my stance on Mutila Periyar would be, Decommission the dam because every it not because it is Mula Periyar, because it will set a trend for thinking on the larger picture of all those dams that are waiting, they are old, getting older and older. Because three years back in Rajasthan in the Luni River, one dam had uh, one dam failure was there. And uh, luckily because there are no downstream populations living, it was say I mean it was not a big catastrophe. But this can you cannot predict, and that was not because of any earthquake. Dam failure can happen due to so many reasons. So in Mulaperiyar, according to me, decommissioning has to be done, but it's not something which can take place in one year. So decommissioning itself is a very long process. It's a costly process. It will take time. And the, on the other side, it is time for us to go for alternate water management, water options for Tamil Nadu. And Tamil Nadu should get ready for that. See, they should get that 18 to 19 TMC feet of water, which they get every year. Let, let them get it. But there, there could be other options which may have to jointly look out. And it is not just a new dam, which is higher and larger capacity. They bought the dam that you have, it is just 300 meters downstream, again the seismic zone. Yes. And again, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, which we cannot uh, discount. And very, um, and very important aspect is, in 1895, when Mulaperiyar was constructed, there were no dams in that region. But now you have 17 dams in the river basin. But are we looking at the larger picture? No. Just immediately, you know, closer to, close to Mulaperiyar, we have so many other dams. But uh, Kerala is only talking about this entire dam as if this is the only problem here. But Didiki Dam is equally problematic. Concrete dams are also not safe, though this is not a concrete dam. So I, according to me, we have to jointly look out for uh, other options, and which, I, which is not a large dam. Okay. <coughs> Sir, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Dr. Letha. Yes. See, uh, <coughs> one of the major problems for the... Okay, okay. Okay. Sir, Mr. Chairman, the way Kerala is the highest literacy rate, the things are so undesirable happening of river or any environment. Don't you think it's high time to have a fundamental rights of river, environment, all this? It should be constitutionally protected. Until now, we make it a political agenda, it will never be taken seriously. So I think that should be taken at a constitutional level. That's for everybody, not for me. I mean, that's for everybody, I think. <laughs> not for me. Okay. <laughs> It's taken as an observation rather yes. than a question. Okay. <coughs> Madam, one of the main, main problem, reason for the dying of rivers is the sand mining. <coughs> and the sand is one of the major material for uh, building construction. And Kerala, the construction work is going, it is a continuous going, whether it is uh, houses or flats. See, almost it is uh, multiplying every day. Earlier it was one house, now it is given to five, six houses. <coughs> 
So, have you thought of anything which is an alternative material other than sand? Because especially the Bharatapura, the, uh, the biggest problem is uh, sand mining. And some of the areas become absolutely no run, it, and it has become uh, <coughs> in the center of the river, it has become a forest like situation, like small bushes and all these things. So, <coughs> this temptation will be there because uh, you cannot uh, stop building construction. But do we have an alternative material other than land so that uh, you know, we can restrict the use of you know, la uh, this sand for building construction? Maybe you can answer the question.